For centuries, the thought of cloning humans and other animals has incited vast excitement throughout the scientific community, as well as the general public. In fact, the first demonstration of artificial embryo twinning occurred in 1885, where Hans Driesch, a German biologist and philosopher from Bad Kreisnach, cloned a sea urchin. He accomplished this by shaking two celled sea urchin embryos, which allowed him to separate the cells, which were both able to grow into identical sea urchins. This process of cloning continued to evolve and over the years was tested on salamanders in 1902 to 1928, then on frogs in 1952 to 1958, and the first mammalian experiment was done in 1975, when J. Derek Brommel transferred a nucleus from a rabbit embryo cell into an enucleated rabbit egg cell. Brommel would have had to place the cell into a mother rabbit, which would have been the first nuclear transfer, but he never completed this experiment. The most famous case of cloning occurred in 1996, when Ian Wilmot and Keith Campbell successfully cloned a sheep using somatic cell nuclear transfer. This sheep was named Dolly and provided clear evidence that cloning to such a significant extent was indeed possible. Scientists cloned Dolly by taking a body cell from sheep A. They then took an egg cell from sheep B and removed the nucleus from that egg cell. With the body cell from sheep A, they fused it with the egg cell from sheep B and this cell developed into an embryo, which was placed inside of sheep C, which acted as a surrogate mother. Therefore, this makes Dolly a clone of sheep A. This was a major breakthrough in the process of cloning an animal and it opened the floodgates to attempting to clone larger and more sophisticated cellular animals. Since Dolly the Sheep, scientists have successfully cloned cattle, swine, sheep, goats, mice, rats, rabbits, cats, mules, horses and dogs. And now it seems as if though the possibility for cloning animals is endless, as long as scientists have enough DNA to clone them. From the rich and powerful trying to clone their pets, to farmers cloning livestock to create the perfect genetic version of animals, essentially eliminating the process of continuously breeding animals until the desired results are achieved. And even though this is extremely interesting, there could also be some dangers to cloning animals. And the biggest danger lies in cloning extinct animals. Humans have long been interested in history and the secrets which lies before the dawn of mankind, which is pushing scientists towards attempting to clone beasts from the past. The most well-known example of this is attempting to bring back the great woolly mammoths which once ruled during the Ice Age. Scientists claim that bringing back the mammoths could help in the battle against climate change as they act as natural geoengineers, maintaining highly productive stepped landscapes which would help stop dangerous amounts of carbon dioxide from being released from the melting permafrost. However, it has not yet been possible for scientists to clone a mammoth as the living DNA is currently required to clone animals and all mammoth DNA that we have has decayed drastically over the thousands of years since mammoths have gone extinct. So to do this, scientists either need to find a specimen so well preserved that it still has the living DNA or the process of cloning animals need to evolve to the point where the living DNA is no longer necessary. But the issue with cloning extinct animals is clear. No one can with a 100% certainty predict the outcome of what will happen if previously extinct animals are brought back to the modern era. One example of a possible cloning situation which could prove catastrophic is the attempt to revive the Tasmanian tiger, which used to live in Australia and only went extinct about 40 years ago, which we also still have living DNA from. As a team led by the University of Melbourne, was able to successfully sequence the genome of Tasmanian tigers, making it one of the most complete sets of DNA we have of any extinct animal. The reason this could be so dangerous is because of the effects these carnivores could have on the existing wildlife, as their only possible rival predator could be the dingo. This could result in increased strain on the dingo and Tasmanian tiger's prey, which includes kangaroos, wallabies, small rodents and many more. 
All these animals play an important role in the current Australian ecosystem. By promoting the regeneration of plants and keeping invasive plants in control. Another issue with cloning extinct animals is that they would have no natural parents to help raise them and teach them the proper hunting and survival techniques which brings into question whether or not a cloned animal will have the same behavioural attributes as the extinct relatives. This makes it even more difficult to predict what would happen when extinct animals are reintroduced into nature. It is also ethically questionable to clone extinct animals as their quality of life might not be as great as it once was without other members of their species to help teach them and integrate them back into nature. And as animals have gone extinct, new species have taken their place, which could make it more difficult for the previously extinct animals to survive if they are brought back. The same argument could be made that the prey or fauna which an extinct animal used to rely on could be extinct now, and as we do not know much about the extinct animals, we cannot tell if they will have enough food or be able to obtain the food efficiently. Cloning an animal is also extremely costly. For example, it costed 1 billion US dollars to clone 1000 endangered animals. And these animals are not even extinct, meaning it is much easier to obtain their DNA. That brings the cost of cloning an endangered animal to about 1 million US dollars per animal. So it is reasonable to assume that cloning an extinct animal will be even more expensive than this. While that money could be better invested into protecting the animals which live today and are highly threatened and endangered. This is where my biggest quarrel with cloning extinct animals lie, as I think it is far more important to stop elephants from going extinct instead of trying to bring back a woolly mammoth for example. So even though cloning already existing animals has some benefits. As of right now, in my mind there is no reason to bring back already extinct animals. And instead we should focus on protecting the beautiful wildlife and fauna which we already have. Especially as more and more animals are becoming extinct. From sharks in the ocean to giant land mammals. And I think it is better to be proactive regarding the subject rather than being reactive.